We'll start this problem, as we have in the past, by making our rectangular models to find our common denominators. One rectangle for each one of the fractions. We're going to look at the first add end. It's one half, so we'll partition it into two equal parts by using a vertical line. And since the numerator is one, we'll shade in one of the two sections. For the second add end, we have three fifths. We're going to use horizontal lines. Since the denominator is five, we need five equal portions. We'll uh, apportion that by making four horizontal lines. And then we'll see that the numerator is three, so we're going to shade in three of the five parts. Now to find our common denominators, we're going to draw in our horizontal lines in our first add end. And if we look at what we have here, we have a total of 2 by 5, that's a denominator of 10, so we'll put that in. And of those, 5 are shaded, so 1 half becomes 5 tenths. Now we'll partition the second add end, or the model for the second add end. We'll make one vertical line. We now have, once again, ten equal parts. And of those, six are shaded. If we find the sum of the numerators, we see that five plus six is eleven. So now we have an improper fraction. We're going to uh, <clears throat> turn this into a mixed number using a number bond or decomposition. And we can see that 11 tenths has 10 tenths plus 1 tenth. And we can see that uh, 10 tenths equals 1 plus 1 tenth equals 1 and 1 tenth. Let's do the next example. Once again, we're going to create a uh, pair of rectangular models rect uh, to represent each one of these add ends. Five sevenths. We're going to represent that by creating that rectangle and making six vertical lines, partitioning it into seven equal parts. And since the numerator is 5, we're going to shade in 5 out of the 7 partitions. Going along with our second add end, this time we're going to use our vertical lines since it's um, the denominator is 2. We need two equal portions using one horizontal line and we're going to shade in one of the two parts. Again, finding our common denominator, we're going to draw on that one horizontal line. We now see that we have 2 by 7 and that is a denominator of 14. And of the 14, 10 are shaded. Now we're going to find our uh, common denominator with a second add end. And we're going to again put in our six vertical lines to partition this now into 14 parts once again. And if we count our shaded parts, we have the sum of, uh, we have a 7. We'll find the sum. See if we can move that over without causing major problems. Uh, a little bit more space. And we have 17 fourteenths. We'll again decompose that. We have 14 fourteenths plus 3 fourteenths equals 1 plus 3 fourteenths equals 1 and 3 fourteenths. We'll run a few more examples here for you and then get to some word problems. 
I'm just going to do the first of these two problems here. I, I think we've done enough examples. By now it should be very clear what to do. We simply do, do what we did in uh, Lesson 3 of Module 3, and then do a little decomposition at the end to turn our improper fraction into a mixed number. Again, we have our rectangular models. So we'll draw in the rectangles. Three-fourths. Partition that using three vertical lines. We'll shade in three. Going to the second one, we have five-sixths, so we're going to use five horizontal lines and shade five of them in. Now we'll find our common denominator for the first add end by putting in those five horizontal lines to partition it into six equal parts. And we see that we have 24 parts. Out of the 24 parts, we have 1, 2, 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3 times 6 is 18. So our numerator is 18. And our denominator is 24. Find our second uh, common denominator for our second add end. We'll put in the three vertical lines. Again, we have that in 24 parts. So that's our denominator. Of those 24, we have 20 shaded. We'll find the sum of the numerators. We get 38 out of 24. Uh, we will now decompose this. We have 24. 20 fourths plus 14 20 fourths. We can now simplify that by changing the uh, 20 fourths 20 fourths into uh, 1 and 14 20 fourths into uh, that, just keeping it the same. We get 1 and 14 20 fourths. Now, if we look at the numerator and the denominator, we can see that they're both divisible by 2. So we can simplify this fraction further. So if I take my numerator and divide it by 2, I get 7. If I take my denominator and divide it by 2, I get 12. So I've now changed my improper fraction of 38 twenty fourths into a mixed number and then simplified it to 1 and 7 twelfths. Let's get on to some word problems. Carlos wants to practice piano two hours each day. He practices piano for three-fourths of an hour before school and seven-tenths of an hour when he gets home. How many hours has Carlos practiced the piano? How much longer does he need to practice before going to bed in order to meet his goal? We're going to look at the whole problem here. We know that his goal is to practice two hours a day, so that's our whole problem. We'll label that too. Now we know that he practices three quarters of an hour before school and seven tenths of an hour after school when he gets home. If we find the sum of those, we find out how many hours he's practiced the piano. Once we find that sum, we can next determine how many, uh, uh, how much longer he needs to practice before going to bed to meet this goal. So we'll put a question mark there. So first we'll solve the part one. All right, uh, we have three-fourths plus seven-tenths. We can create our rectangular model. It's a little tedious when our denominators get so big. There's three fourths and seven tenths. We've got a lot of horizontal lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I have another there. Let's count them to make sure we got that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more makes the ten. It's going to be tough drawing that in that smaller rectangle, but okay, we got seven out of the ten shaded in. 
Okay, now to find our first common denominator, we're going to start seeing a pattern here. I'll use my blue, and then we'll get those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I counted those, I would see that there's 40. Now you might start noticing some patterns with our common denominators here. So I have 30 out of 40. Uh, so 3 fourths is the equivalent fraction, is 30 fortieths for our common unit. And now we're going to divide our second diagram into four parts going vertically. And again, our denominator is 40. If I count how many I have, well, let's do a little multiplication. 1, 2, 3, 4 times 7 is 28. find the sum. I have 58 fortieths, <clears throat> which becomes 40 fortieths plus 18 fortieths, which becomes 1 and 18 fortieths. We can simplify my fraction. Both are divisible by 2, so it becomes 1 and 9 twentieths. So we now have the whole, and this representation tells us once we have this, we can determine the second part by subtracting from the whole. Now we haven't done a lot of subtracting yet, but uh, let's explore this. So I'm going to have 2 minus 1 in 9 twentieths, and then I'm going to do uh, decompose it, 2 minus 1 minus 9 twentieths. 2 minus 1 is 1 minus 9 twentieths. We've done some uh, activities to prepare us for this in our uh, fluency practice. Uh, I need to know what do I need to uh, get to this hole here. So I have one hole I have and I'm taking away 9 twentieths. We can think of this as 20 twentieths also. And minus 9 twentieths we know that if we subtract the numerators, we'll get 11. So we have 11 20th. So let's explore what we've answered here. He, How much has he practiced during this day? He's practiced 1 and 9 twentieths. How much more practice does he need before he goes to bed? He needs 11 twentieths of an hour. As an extra challenge, you could convert those fractions into minutes. The next problem is even more interesting. It's from, from our homework, and I'm not going to solve it, but I'm going to talk about some strategies. All right, we have Mr. Sanofsky used five-eighths of a tank of gas on a trip to visit relatives for the weekend in another half tank, commuting to work the next week. Then he took another weekend trip and used one-fourth tank of gas. How many tanks of gas did Mr. Sanofsky use altogether? <clears throat> well, we have, let's look at a tape diagram. I think it's pretty obvious what we need to do. We don't know the whole. That's the question. How much gas did he use altogether? But we do know 5 eighths. And we have 1 half. And we have 1 fourth. So what's the total? This tells us that we need to add. I'm going to set up an addition problem and discuss some strategies. What we're going to have to do here is add three fractions, and they all have unlike denominators. So you can choose pairs of these to add first using the strategies that we've taught you. Once you get the sum of one pair, you can add that sum to the other pair. I'm going to give you a quick little recommendation here. I'm going to put the parentheses around these guys. I think if you find the sum of the pair, one-half plus one-fourth first, and then you add your sum to five-eighths, I don't think you'll have much problem with that. But again, we can do that because of the commutative and the associative properties of addition. From there, I think you can get it.